Hi, everybody. This is State Senator Susie Oppenheimer with a report from the New York State Senate. As you know, each month I try and offer a program that I think is going to be of interest to the people of Westchester County. And normally it's all information, but today we're going to have a little fun mm -hmm. because I have two of my colleagues, women in government, and we're going to talk about a little bit about what it was like breaking in, the difficulty, the fun, our past campaigns. We're just going to chat, and I hope you enjoy hearing from us. Uh, on my left is a Rita, far left is Rita Malmud, and she has been for many, many years the councilwoman in the in the council in White Plains. And closest to me is Kathy Borgia, and she is the in, she is the supervisor of the town of Osney but served quite a while on the village board in Osney. So we're just going to chat. I don't think I'll start. I think I'm going to let uh, Rita start. <laughs> and we're just going to kind of chat with each other. So you're welcome to listen in. <laughs> Go. <laughs> well, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, it's always uh, very special to um, reflect over your years in office and what it was like getting there. Um, I remember when I announced to my mother that I was going to run for elective office, she gasped <laughs> and she said, but you're so nice. <laughs> and my response to her, and I, I thought it, it was great presence of mind even now that I reflect <laughs> over it several years later, I said to her, if nice people don't get involved in our government, then you get the kind of government that makes you gasp, that makes you gasp about politicians. And I think that if all of us uh, give a little bit and participate in the government and electoral process, then we truly will have the kind of government that we want. So, What I'm, did you do? I mean, I know, but the out right. there they know. Uh -huh. <laughs> what did you do that kind of prepared you in a way to make this decision to run? Well, I was very interested <coughs> in certain community issues, particularly the environment. And I joined the League of Women Voters in mm -hmm. White Plains, and it was a marvelous informational tool for me, but also um, a learning uh, vehicle for how government operates. I did a lot of observing, and then I did some testifying and some interaction with our government. And um, it really, uh, I, I learned by doing, not so much book learning, but I learned by doing and by observing. And uh, then when I was asked to run for public office, it was an easier transition. Nothing can prepare you 100% for any new job, whether it's in government or any other sphere. But uh, I definitely recommend the League of Women Voters. <laughs> well, w you were the president of the League of Women Voters? Of White Plains of and White then Pl Westchester County. But when you were the president of the League in White Plains, were you going regularly to the, the board meetings of the, the city council? Yes, so absolutely. So that got you into all of those issues? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, well, we're uh, going to have some similar stories here. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> so um, I started off being interested primarily in environmental issues, but then I realized the importance of uh, the electorate being informed, and I quickly uh, transitioned into uh, voter service issues, and then when I became uh, president of the League of Women Voters, it was a more general uh, blend. Um, then, um, before that, I had been involved in, in, in business, but by the time I got involved in, in the League of Women Voters, I, I no longer was. And um, What business was that? Well, first I started out with computers, and then um, a, few le a few years later, my father-in-law died, and he had some uh, real estate, uh, commercial real estate that he managed. and. Uh, despite being um, a Southerner at that time, a very soft-spoken, timid Southerner, I learned to become a New York City landlady <laughs> and uh, a tough, 
a tough woman to deal with if <laughs> I had an opponent. And I, I learned that you don't have to be ugly about things, but you can be firm and insistent. And uh, that has stood me in very good <laughs> stead. Um, so where were I you was born. I was born in 1942. Not where, when? Oh, when? Not when. <laughs> where? Well, I was born in California. Uh, my father was in the newspaper business. So uh, at two, we moved to Georgia. At four, I moved to Speedway, Indianapolis, uh, or Indiana. Uh, Speedway is right outside of Indianapolis. When I was five, we moved to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. When I was ten, we moved to Houston, Texas. And I stayed there until I went to college. Uh, and I came to Sarah Lawrence College here in the New York area. And that's where I met my husband. And we got married while I was in college. And um, his family owned some real estate here in um, White Plains. And um, I was still going to school, earning no money. My husband had graduated from law school about four minutes ago. <laughs> and in those days, new lawyers earned very, very little money, no matter where they were. So we were very happy to accept uh, an apartment that my father-in-law <laughs> provided for us. And once we'd lived in White Plains a little while, we realized it was a terrific community. So when uh, I had started working and my husband was earning a little more money uh, and we could afford to um, buy a house, we deliberately uh, decided to settle in White Plains and have been very glad of that decision. There are many other wonderful communities here, but White Plains work for us, so we're very You can happy tell she's him. a politician. <laughs> <laughs> she's already not dissed us. <laughs> <laughs> very interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. Kathy, you're on next. Okay, well, um, I was just elected Austin Town Supervisor after serving on the village. Thank you very much. <laughs> after serving on the village board for about four years, and I came to politics through a similar, though not exactly the same path. I, wh I um, worked in publishing, and I did product management, and I also worked in a public relations agency. I got my MBA when I was in my 20s and really thought I was going to have a career in business, although I was always interested in politics. I have to, uh, this is a little bit of an embarrassing story, but I got very interested in politics when I was in grade school during the Watergate hearings. I was very annoyed that the Watergate hearings were taking over the time slots of all of the cartoons that I like to watch. <laughs> and then I started to get interested <laughs> in them. And ever since then, I've really been interested in the whole political process and, and, and sort of, you know, what the role of the government is in our lives. And so I was always interested in that, and I was in student government when I was in school. Um, but I moved away from that, and I really thought I was going to have a business career, and I, I worked hard at that for, for several years. But when I moved to when I moved out of Manhattan and I moved um, into Westchester and to Osning, I began to be involved with, with local organizations, and I started to do some volunteer work, and I started to get involved with the Junior League. And what I did in in, the, in my role in the Junior League was, in addition to doing community projects in, in uh, Westchester, I also was involved in the advocacy arm of the Junior League, which is you know similar to some of the League of Women Voters activity, where mm -hmm. we would pick um, topics of interest to all of the leagues of New York State. We had a statewide SPAC, a political action committee. Um, at that time, Westchester, was, uh, all the leaders of that organization were from Westchester, so I was able to learn very quickly about the advocacy process in the state. And I remember mm -hmm. going to Susie's office and, and, and asking her, we are interested in this piece of legislation and we need to know what the problems are with it. And, um, and Susie would help us figure out how to navigate the system to get legislation passed that we wanted to get passed. I worked um, at the time that I was chairing the uh, the Children's Task Force for the for the um, Dice Pack. We were successful in, in getting past the background check legislation for new hires uh, in school districts, and we were very, very pleased about that. And I also met Assemblywoman Sandy Galef in the same sort of in the same sort of function. She her office was in Austin, with, in my hometown, and I would go to her office regularly and ask her questions about about specific pieces of legislation, but then also about the process, getting the ins and outs of the mm. process. And we had a uh, we developed a relationship, and then when she needed someone to run her local office, she asked me if I was interested. So I had, prior to um, being elected town supervisor, I had 
worked as her chief of staff for seven years. So I really got to learn New York State government from the inside out. And then uh, while I was doing that, I was also president of the PTA, and I, I was involved in um, many different organizations in the community and in, in northern Westchester and in, um, in general. And I really got to uh, become interested in local politics through that. I went to several town board meetings on specific issues relating to my community or relating to the uh, or to Westchester County, and um, got, got to got to really be interested in, in in the process by which I think local government has such an impact on residents. It's the government that you you know you see, you touch, you meet in the supermarket, and it really it's the it's really the foundation of our representative democracy. So. I um, decided about f five years ago to run for the village board, and when I was elected to the village board, I, I, I sort of had that moment too where I was, oh my goodness, this is such a whole new world. <laughs> and I remember thinking to myself, it's going to be so hard to get interested in things like sewers or storm water or infrastructure issues. And boy, was I wrong. That turned out to be the most fascinating <laughs> thing. So it's really, it's really, it's a pleasure to serve. In, uh, in government because of the fact that you're always learning something new, there's always a new challenge, but yet you get to work with so many people and really touch their lives for the better. So I am uh, I'm, I'm very excited in being in this new role as town supervisor to be at in the um, sort of administrative role as well as the elected position. So there's policy making and then there's also execution. And um, so I'm looking forward to, even though we have many challenges ahead of us, especially these next few years, really looking forward to coming up with some intrepid solutions, you know, working with the state or with our local <laughs> <laughs> neighboring municipalities to come up with some creative. Or uh, the Westchester Municipal Officials Association. Mm -hmm. That's a good association. Yeah, yeah. And it really works cross party yeah, lines. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, the supervisors and the mayors, they're all pulling out their hands. Mm -hmm. in the exact same way, whether they're <laughs> Democrat or Republican, yeah. whether they're a city or a town or a village. And uh, so you, you get helpful ideas Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And there's, I think there's always strength in working collaboratively, and there's always strength in listening to different different points of view. And, and um, I agree with your answer to your mom that really <laughs> most of the people that you meet in public service I think at the state level as well, but certainly at the local levels, are people who really, really care about their communities. And it's such a pleasure to work with people like that, because even if you disagree with their conclusions, you know that their process has been one of really um, evaluating what's best for the community. So that's why it's, I think, uh, there's really nothing better than working in local <laughs> politics. <laughs> no, I, I think uh, local, definitely, you'll have much less of a philosophic bent, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, do you support pro-choice or mm -hmm. anti-choice, mm -hmm. you know, you, you don't get into that. Mm -hmm. And it's how can we deliver services best for the community that we live in and what are those services that they need or, or do they want. Yeah. Need and want are going to have to be separated in the next couple of years. One uh, thing I hadn't appreciated before I became uh, uh, an elected official is the importance of communicating mm -hmm. with your electorate. Mm -hmm. I thought you just go in there, you learn about topics, and you vote. Mm -hmm. But communicating and letting people know why you're taking the positions that you are, what information you've received, what information you think is important, um, really goes a long way for bringing the public along with you. If they don't understand what you're doing, if it's not self-evident to them, then you have to help them understand it in an easily uh, digestible mm -hmm. fashion. And I think you do a great job with your newsletter mm -hmm. because that's one but way I'm gonna of... I'm going to do a little more. I'm going to try and reach out more because I'm still doing things the old way. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so we are going to be developing an active website mm -hmm. and changing the information regularly. But that reminds me what you just said about having, having the residents understand. I remember I located about the very first group home ever in Westchester County um, on a very lovely street in Mamaroneck in the late 70s when I was mayor. I can't tell you the hostility that was in the boardroom that night when we were to vote on it. Mm -hmm. And it was something new. 
But I had read the Cornell study, and uh, you know, it, it, they they said no property values do not go down on the street where the house is put. No, they are very good neighbors. They all, you know, they keep their homes well. Um, and so I presented that, and um, and I I said uh, I was the only one on the board who uh, voted for it. Everybody else voted against it because they knew we had the Padavan Law, and the Padavan Law would take over the the siting of the group home unless you have uh, another home mm -hmm. ready and available to go. And uh, so they, they didn't care. They could vote no and keep the community, you know, what they thought the community was, you know, happy. And yet it would still get cited. And I got up and made an impassioned speech. I don't, I normally deal with things very calmly and coolly, but, um, or at least calmly. But, um, <laughs> But I really made an impassioned plea to my community to accept these. Um, there were uh, young men in their 20s and 30s who uh, were disabled <coughs> to the point um, uh, where really their, I wouldn't say their abilities were much beyond a six-year-old, mm. but very, you know, loving and very childish and very, in many ways, very, very charming, you know. And um, I made this plea to the community saying that, um, oh, a little known fact about a, a third or maybe more of my husband's family are deaf. So we have about 15 deaf members of our family. And when my sister-in-law and brother-in-law are in the house, and I have friends in, let's say, for dinner, and everybody starts off, they're really fearful. Mm. How is this going to work? They're different from me. Uh, am I going to be able to communicate? What's going to be the, the parameters, you know? Mm. Well, I can only tell you, after a half hour, <laughs> they're chatting away <laughs> with my, <laughs> true, you must look at her, you must talk more slowly, and maybe move your lips a little bit better, but she's an excellent lip reader, and so is that whole part of my family. And so I think when I made this impassioned plea, mm -hmm. the community fell in behind me, even though they weren't thrilled with my decision, I can tell you. <laughs> but they understood why I was doing it. And uh, so, yes, I'm. I sometimes in my Senate years have gotten a little slack on uh, communicating outside of my newsletter, which I do try and put a lot of information in. Okay, my story. Actually, our story is somewhat similar <laughs> in the early years. Every year I was in a different school in a different state. <laughs> but that was because my father was colonel in the Army for the Second World War. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a lawyer, and uh, like many other uh, people, that was a very different war. They heard about Pearl Harbor and the next morning they kissed their family goodbye and went and just volunteered. You know, our country had never been under attacks. <laughs> um, and then, uh, of course, he was teaching military law as well as doing some law himself. Um, we were moved around quite a bit. Um, and, but we did end up, the last year and a half, he got assigned to the Pentagon. So uh, in 45 and part 46, we were still there. But then we moved into, uh, actually into Manhattan. And uh, I always thought it would be interesting to get involved in some way. I mean, after college, and I got my MBA too, you know, that's very funny, I didn't realize that. you. Uh, I got my MBA immediately after, mm -hmm. so I was like 22 when I had the uh, MBA. And um, I was working on Wall Street, and um, I always thought, because I majored in, cross-majored in Gov and Economics, mm -hmm. but, you know, Manhattan's so big, I mean, you don't really get this. So when I was pregnant with my fourth, we moved to the Burbs. <laughs> And to the same house, 40 years I'm in the same <laughs> house in Mamaroneck. 
and like you, got very involved, PTA, League of Women Voters. Um, and I think they asked me to run in the village of Romerinick because I was league president and I knew the issues because I had to go every other week to the board meetings. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have many Democrats back then. We were mostly Republican in our village. Uh, for who knows, it might still be true in my village, I don't know. <laughs> but we were behind the curve when it started to change, mm -hmm. when Westchester started to change demographically. But um, I thought it would look good on my resume. I was thinking of going back to work because my youngest was going to go to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had handled certain industries for L.F. Rothschild mm -hmm. in their brokerage house. And I thought, you know, it's a good opportunity to go back to work. <laughs> and this would look very nice on my resume, you know. <laughs> Plucky woman runs for mayor. <laughs> well, strange things happen on your way to the ballot box, right? <gasps> so I never got back to Wall Street. <laughs> I mean, there I was, a, a mayor. Four, four children, the eldest of which was 11. Um, no household help, I mean. But it was a, a wonderful, you know, evolution for mm -hmm. me. I got back to being what I had originally been, which is very much of a people person, loving to hear people's stories. The more different you are, the more interesting <laughs> I find people. <laughs> um, but when you're working in local government, it is all about the people, as mm -hmm. we were saying at the beginning. It's how you can help them in their daily life. Uh, the federal government I is more distant. Uh, I mean, not that they're not important, they are, but I think that uh, being mayor or supervisor mm -hmm. or councilwoman, uh, you do have such a direct, immediate impact. That was one of the things when I became a senator that I said I was going to miss yeah, because, yeah. you know, there's what, 325,000 in my district. It's a big district. so I don't have that same kind of I don't personal know, I think you feeling. I think you still give the personal touch. People <laughs> call you Susie. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Half of them can't say my last name. That's why they call me Susie. You know what but I think is interesting, too, about at the local level is that you, you people come to you with criticisms quite quite a lot. You know, that's, yes. that, that's the thing that they jump up to tell you when you're online in the supermarket. But it's so valuable to hear that because you know, you're getting such direct line of feedback right away, exactly. and um, that's that's really one of the privileges of being in local government. And you know, when you what you were saying about educating people, it also it's it's a two way street because the more you get people involved in the issues that are going on in your community, the more you hear back from them. And I know that we often find in in Austin, and I'm sure it's even more so in Maranek and. Uh, or uh, equally so in Maranek and White Plains, is there's a lot of dear, interesting people out there who have a completely different point of view than you might have. So it's a really good, it's, it's, it's lucky to be in the community where you work so that you get all of it that. It was very, and yeah. you know what else was very lucky for me? Um, if I had gone to back to Wall Street, I would have been very far away from my children. Mm. Here I was three minutes away <laughs> when my youngest would call up and say, oh my God, I left my lunch home. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, or, uh, call the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, she services. Uh, or the, the you know, fourth grader would say, I'm going to be in a play, could you maybe come mm -hmm. to see it? Or um, we're doing the finals of the soccer games, would you... I mean, I certainly was not going to go to each one of their athletic things. I would never have been a mayor. I couldn't have had time to be a mayor. But I would go to an occasional one that they thought was important. And uh, so that is a, the beauty. Sometimes people say, I have young children. I don't know how I can manage it. That's the time you should, because you're right in the middle of the it's community. True. It's true. And I think, you know, for, for women, for men, for men as well, but for women, your children look to you to see what kind of an impact people can have in the world. And I think that I said recently to my daughters are 10 and 13, and so 
f because I've been in politics for five years, it's been a long time, a, little, a big chunk of, of their lives, half, half of my younger daughter's life. And I did say to her this campaign, do you mind when I'm on TV or when I'm t always talking to people at parties about local issues or when there's mailings about me or letters about me in the paper? And she said, nah, I'm used to it. <laughs> so <laughs> That's you are, good. You are, well, you, you're setting an example of what can be done. I, I mean, I think that everyone in local politics, uh, as a general rule, gets involved because they think things can be better and they think that their work will help get to better. So that's a really powerful example for children. And also it's your home. It is your home. You've chosen to live in this community and what made you choose that? Mm -hmm. You know when I became mayor I had only lived in Mernick seven years. That was very unusual because everybody that preceded me had been born. <laughs> <laughs> and I would sometimes say but I chose I to chose live it, here. Yeah. It's sort of like uh, an adoptive parent saying, mm -hmm. I chose you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very meaningful. Mm -hmm. What I was uh, wanted to just get in is the difference that has occurred in the last 30 years that you and I have been in uh, some way or another involved in government and being female. Because when I first started, it was very hard for a female mm -hmm. to raise any money. Only men could raise money. Uh, forget women. <laughs> um, but, you know, they had done a lot of surveys that I would reference. And they were like, and these were big polls done across the country. And they said, like, women were perceived by the general public as being um, more hardworking more honest in that they resolved issues on the basis of the facts of the issue mm -hmm. rather than who is scratching their <laughs> back. Um, just a, a variety of very positive uh, attributes. And uh, it took a long time for women to want to come forward and step out. You know, they're fearful it's not a clean business government, you know. Uh, people say nasty things. You run in campaigns where they could throw a rotten egg at you, you know, a <laughs> uh, tomato. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's just you, women were fearful of stepping out, mm -hmm. even though I would talk because I think I was one of the first or maybe the first female mayor elected in Westchester's history back then, 33 years ago. and. I wanted to get more women in because I knew we were good in government from my work that I had done in the League of Women Voters, mm -hmm. that they knew their issues, you know, and they could speak it back then. Most of us learned our speaking skills through these opportunities mm -hmm. and, you know, not for profits. Well, I think um, stereotypical perceptions of women have changed over the decades. Um, one of the things that I was most concerned about when I first ran for office almost 20 years ago was whether or not people would uh, understand that I had the strength to deal with tough issues and that I would persevere. So uh, I, I think to. that is something that yes. has changed. Well, let me I say thank to. you to you ladies. Yes, for, I have. <laughs> for breaking that ground. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank you both so much. This has been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed listening to us chat on about how women have come a long way in government, and we are now perceived as winners. Thank you for listening. This is Susie Oppenheimer with New York State uh, Re Government Report. And I changed the name. <laughs> thank you all so. Thank you. Yeah. I know this was.